Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out what five supplements I recommend for climbing. Oh yeah, I already took my shirt off. I apologize for that. I thought I was gonna make one video these days without taking my shirt off, but it's super hot in this van. And you know what? If you guys subscribe to this video, I will make sure to not take my shirt off in the next video. So smash that subscribe button and uh, keep watching. We're gonna be talking about climbing supplements. So um, I'd like to start this off with a little disclaimer. Like I am definitely not a supplement expert or a nutrition expert. All this information I've found on the internet that was originally sourced from scientific papers. And I'm gonna leave links uh, to in the description to all the videos and articles that I'm pulling this stuff from. Now there are some of my opinions in here and that's gonna be my anecdotal kind of evidence of my personal experience with these uh, products. So now that that's out of the way and I don't get totally destroyed in the comments section, uh, let's get into it. So the first and most important supplement is actually almost not even a supplement at all. It's protein. Now, I don't have the actual box this came in or bottle this came in right now. I just have some out here right now, but this is whey protein. Uh, it's actually optimum nutrition, gold standard, 100% whey. Um, it is uh, very good. I've been taking it for well over 10 years now since I was in high school. So uh, I, I love it. Uh, I've taken some other brands. I've taken a BSN uh, Syntha 6, which is not um a hundred percent whey it's actually six different proteins so that's a good um option and there's also some other really good brands out there now um one disclaimer i want to say uh whey protein is the best and i'm actually reading this from a script was a little different for me usually i'm just kind of speaking my mind but um whey has uh, a very high biological value which basically means it's very effective at turning the protein into tissue in the body so and whey protein is the highest on this scale um, and you can get other proteins that are also good um, like especially if you're vegan obviously whey is derived from milk so you're not going to want to take that stuff now if you do take vegan proteins like soy rice um, and pea just make sure you don't take the same one all the time if you're gonna take like two or three scoops throughout the day, take a different one each time or mix them together because whey protein has an amino acid profile that's gonna be very effective at building muscle in your body. Um, whereas some of those other proteins don't have the same diverse amino acid profile, therefore they're not as good as whey. So altogether, cumulatively, you can get good from other stuff, but just a note, try to get your protein right after you climb, preferably within an hour. That's going to be when you're going to see the best gains from muscle protein synthesis that the protein is actually doing. Whey is very fast absorbing in the body, so that's going to be very good. If you have the chance, get one of these uh, blender bottle things. Uh, they're real cheap, simple. Put your protein in it, and then once you're done climbing, Maybe when you get back to the car or something, put a little bit of water in. You might need like eight ounces of water. Put some water in there, shake it up, drink it. It's that simple. Um, and you're going to get that, you know, 25 to 30 grams of protein right away. And you're going to be ready to build that muscle and get strong. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, another thing is how much protein do you need per day? Well, that's something that is a little hard to answer. A good rule of thumb is around one gram uh, per pound of body weight, um, but that's highly controversial. I'm going to leave some links to some other people that are experts in the field um, on here on YouTube. One is uh, PickFit and the other one is Jeff Nippard, um, and they're going to tell you maybe a little more about that subject because uh, I don't really feel qualified to answer it myself. Me personally, I just try to get basically as much as I can get without feeling like I'm forcing it. Uh, I'm not super into tracking it. Usually I'll have like 
either one uh, scoop in the morning and one scoop after I climb. At the end of the day, if I feel like I didn't eat a lot of protein, I'll often get a scoop in um, and then that'll just be like my little extra supplementation. So going on to the second thing, creatine. Now, don't uh, judge me quite yet. Listen to this whole entire thing. So creatine for some reason has a bad rap in media. I'm not really sure why. It's actually one of the most researched supplements ever uh, with over 700 studies uh, being done on creatine monohydrate. And this stuff is like really simple. It's You can get this at Walmart. You can get this on Amazon. I take the pills because I find it to be a little bit easier. Uh, so it's just one pill like this. You can take it. You're supposed to take uh, three at a time typically, but you can kind of, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but basically what creatine does is... If you, let's say like you're non-creatine and creatine, the non-creatine climber might struggle on the last move of the climb with the same amount of strength, whereas the creatine climber might be able to do that one last move right at the end of like a short boulder problem and be able to like have that little extra power left in them. Now, um, a lot of people will tell you to load the creatine to fe feel the effects immediately or within a, like a couple days. I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest just taking like a reasonable amount. Typically it's five grams. I personally take around two to three because I'm fairly conservative on it. Um, because if you do take too much, you can see some water weight gain. And like I said before, we don't want to gain weight as climbers because we're trying to fight gravity. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's something you can experiment with. Uh, I personally don't see any like downsides to taking a small amount. But, you know, if you take it and you find yourself bloating up and feeling a bunch of water stuck in your muscles and, you know, you feel like real weighed down, maybe just don't take this supplement. You know, it might not be for you. And that's something you can experiment with. And it seems to be totally safe. You don't have to cycle it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Go ahead and uh, check those links in the description if you want to hear more about it from some other people that um, maybe know a little more about creatine. But speaking purely from a climber point of view, I think it's a pretty good thing to take conservatively, obviously. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's very many side effects for the potential strength gains that you can get. So going on to the third one, and possibly the one you're already doing is caffeine so uh, these are some coffee beans I would suggest starting off um, most mornings that you're gonna climb with a cup of coffee and if you want to add a little stupid energy drink uh, I don't do this very often but uh, it sometimes helps usually I did that um, the two v tens in a day I had an energy drink with me Mountain Dew game fuel um, I don't always drink game fuel but when I do I climb double digit <laughs> just because I don't know it gave me a little bit of energy boost um, that caffeine really helps it can um, increase performance increase energy um, and it's definitely a it's not what most people would call a supplement but it, it is it's a stimulant and it can really help while either you're training or you're trying to climb hard uh, one thing to note about it is that often to get the full effects out of the caffeine, you're gonna wanna cycle through it occasionally if you stop feeling that like burst of energy when you take it. So like, let's say you've been drinking like three cups of ca uh, coffee every morning for like six months straight, uh, you might stop feeling that like burst of energy when you get to your second cup. Um, you might wanna then like dial it back for like a month or a couple weeks at least, and then go back on it and you're gonna see more of those like actual performance effect. So uh, the last, well, basically the last one that I have with me right now that I take is creatine. It's in this uh, bottle right here. It's just basically, um, it's used to help your ligaments and tendons, which we all know uh, our fingers have a lot of those and we wanna keep them healthy and full of all this good nutrition. Now. What I like to do is I take a little bit of this stuff and I put it in 
my coffee in the morning. Try not to have your coffee too hot. Um, I've read that that could denature the uh, collagen, so just something to consider. Um, but basically, it's you want to take it maybe in the morning and within 30 minutes of you doing a climbing activity, and that can actually help bring that collagen proteins into your ligaments and tendons and potentially keep you from getting injured. Um, I don't really know if this works or not. Um, I actually started taking it and I got my first climbing injury ever after I started taking it, but also I had become much stronger uh, over the course of me taking it, so I think I might have just kind of overdone it. Um, but that's something for you guys to experiment with. Like I said, if you can afford it um, and you know you get the unflavored stuff you throw it in your coffee it really doesn't taste like much I mean it's unflavored but it still has a taste um, then I don't see why you wouldn't use it as a climber just because of that potential for um, you know helping your tendons and ligaments which we all need help with um, so yeah, that's a good one. Uh, a resource I would say on that is Fizzy Vantage, Eric Horse. He has a company now that is selling uh, collagen uh, proteins. And uh, I would definitely read his article on it and uh, maybe pick some of that stuff up as it's kind of made for climbers by climbers. Um, so that's always a good choice. Now, the last one that I'm gonna talk to, I actually don't have any right now because I've ran out. Um, but uh, it's uh, beta alkaline, I believe, um, alanine, something like that. Um, but basically, it's going to help your power endurance. Uh, I've definitely done some research. There's uh, climbingnutrition.com that talks about it, and um, they say that it's going to be good for like about 30 seconds to 10 minutes of exercise. So that's basically getting into like the power endurance. Most boulders are over around 30 seconds to a minute. So this is gonna be more focused towards root climbers that want that power endurance. It's gonna kind of be maybe more focused towards you, but I think as a boulderer, you could benefit from it as well because sometimes you do have those roots that are pretty long and you need a little bit of power endurance. How I personally use it is I use it to flavor my water and my Nalgene. So I just take a scoop of that, throw it in my Nalgene, and it makes it not taste like water it tastes like you know maybe fruit punch or whatever um so it just basically it's it's like a it's like a sports drink that could in fact give you some power endurance now one thing is the first time you take it you're gonna feel your mouth tingling and it's gonna you're gonna get all like psyched and oh my gosh this stuff is really working that's um not really doing much other than making your mouth tingle uh, and that'll go away after a while. So don't get alarmed by that. Um, it sounds a little weird. And that's this is definitely the one that I would suggest like putting the lowest priority on in terms of supplements. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I really like all these and I think that you guys can get stronger and stay healthy if you guys supplement these. Uh, links in the description below. Make sure you subscribe and catch you in the next one.